Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 9 A Hero in a Beatty. Lately, Consort Ji's movements were considerably at ease. Chi Nikan's fear, that during her pregnancy Consort Ji would snatch back the privilege of managing the estate, did not occur. Meanwhile Li Chen had continued to visit Consort Wei, causing the woman to burst with joy. It wasn't a secret that Consort Ji and Consort Wei, who lived near one another for many years, did not see eye to eye. If one received favor, the other would grit her teeth. That said, Chi Nikan felt a bit dissatisfied. Lately, she had tried to find someone in her faction to replace her in nightly duties but not once did Li Chen take any of them up on her offer. In fact, he sought out Consort Wei, someone she did not have a relationship with. But Chi Nikan was not in a rush. She planned to slowly pull Consort Wei to her side. Consort Wei sent Chi Nikan a precious gift, a lily and jasmine scented calming incense, used to promote sleep. It carried a faint yet refreshing scent. Suitable to be placed in a pregnant woman's room. In the past, this had been part of Consort Wei's dowry. She herself only had two boxes. Chi Nikan lit the incense. The next day, when Consort Wei came to pay a visit, she mentioned her experience with the gift. It is indeed a good incense. These days, every other scent seems too strong. But once I inhale this incense, the discomfort disappears. Even His Highness has praised it. Consort Wei smiled. That Your Highness likes it is this concubine's fortune. The smile on Consort Ji's lips, however, did not quite meet her eyes. During this concubine's pregnancy, I sometimes could not detect scents. In the future, if secondary consort Wei becomes with child, she would understand the princess consort's suffering. As Chi Nikan was with child, she hadn't the patience to deal with the bickering of the other. She quickly dismissed them. Although she didn't feel well, constantly vomiting and unable to eat, her mood was often decent. That she didn't have to yield the right to manage the estate proved a large factor. She studied the map of the estate a few times. In the end, Chi Nikan was unsure where to move Chi Yunruo. The estate had two large empty courtyards. They were situated in a good location as well. One was near both the Ink Lotus Courtyard and the Performance Field. But she intended to leave this residence for her future son. The other courtyard was close to the lake the scenery breathtaking. However, she also didn't wish for Chi Yunruo to live there. Although there were still three to four other vacant areas, some weren't renovated yet or had other issues that made them unsuitable. What remained was a small courtyard. Unfortunately, it was close to beautiful forest, Ji Huan's temporary residence. Chi Nikan threw the map to the ground out of annoyance. After a sip of melon tea, she said, summoned Chi Yunruo. The moment he arrived, Chi Nikan laughed and dragged him to her side to sit. Now that I am with child, I have many things to take care of. It's been a while since we've last met. Have you been well these past few days? Yes. Nothing really happened. Chi Nikan nodded. I am trying to find you a suitable place to live. What do you prefer? As Chi Yunruo watched her, he said in a soft voice, your honored self can decide. A light sigh escaped Chi Nikan's lips. Third brother is blaming me for not taking care of you well enough. It's not easy being a daughter-in-law of the imperial family. This prince estate isn't as peaceful as it may seem. Everyone has their own desires. It's only third brother that is close to me. You are my most trusted person here. Not a word left Chi Yunruo's lips. Chi Nikan bitterly smiled and shook her head. She reached out to hold the other's hand. I haven't asked you this before but why does His Highness want you to move out? Is it because elder sister did not take care of you well? Or was it the people in this courtyard? Just let me know, and I'll take care of it for you. No one has bullied me, said Chi Yunruo slowly said. I originally was supposed to move out. Only women should be living in the prince estate's inner courtyard. Even my page Little Ching doesn't stay here. Eventually I'll have to leave. 
This is the eldest Miss Residence and the young master is about to be born. The space here is already too small and unsuitable for you. Chi Yunruo said it incredibly well, very logical. Chi Nikan stood there, shocked. However, in her heart still lurked the suspicion that he was hiding his true self. Just like her mother had said, he looked obedient but was in reality a sly person. She held the teacup without saying anything for a while. Then, she stroked her protruding abdomen. Tonight, His Highness will eat dinner here. Dress more brightly. I'll have him take a look at you. Yes. As Chi Yunruo left the main chamber, the sun was still high and bright in the sky. He lifted his head. Glanced at it. All of a sudden, he felt as if darkness had swallowed the world whole. Once Chi Yunruo returned to his room, he lay down on his bed. He called out for Li Yisu. A moment later, Li Yisu stepped through the doors. She loitered by Chi Yunruo's bedside, before sitting by the edge of the bed. Li Yisu reached out and used her hand to comb back neatly some stray strands of Chi Yunruo's hair. Her voice soft as she said, From now on, the days will be well. In the past, the other dowry servant girls who had come with Li Yisu to the prince estate often asked about Chi Yunruo. About how he had passed the couple of months and even injected their own comments. Li Yisu understood their motives. To pacify them, she would drop a few tidbits of information here and there, then gave an excuse to leave. No matter how loyal her heart had been to the Countess and the Eldest Miss, Eldest Miss and Li Yubai and the others were now obstacles. She was now someone who belonged to the third young master. To Chi Yunruo. Come noon, Li Yisu helped bathe Chi Yunruo. Then she assisted him into thin robes a shade of melon. After she had finished the preparations, her master sat on a chair, peering at the window that she was shutting. Once night arrived, Li Yisu knocked on the door. Her voice carried respect. May third young master follow me. All right. He rose to his feet. They felt heavy as lead and he staggered, losing his balance. Li Yisu was prepared, quickly supporting him. Yet he shook off her hand. She froze. By the time she snapped back to her senses, Chi Yunruo had already left the room. Xiao Shan and Xiao Ju watched as the figure of their master shrank into the distance. Their laughter was the chime of bells. Older sister Li Yisu, is our master attending to his highness tonight? Li Yisu took her time choosing her words. You two are young but knowledgeable. Xiao Shan said, from now on, our days will be brighter. Older sister Yui Air from the forecourt, who attends to young master Ji Huan, has a lot of money. No matter how rich, we are still servants, said Li Yisu. We are people that must serve our masters. Never had Chi Yunruo thought that he would one day have to attend to the prince. Instead, he had thought with the addition of him to her dowry, Chi Nikan would just receive another servant in the prince estate. The Department of Labor from the Ministry of Rights had sent Chi Nikan some appropriate additions to her dowry. They were stored in a courtyard next to her own. The area was always bustling, servants there were always loud. A curious Chi Yunruo peeked through the door while passing through. Caught sight of a twenty-year-old man engraving designs on a meal box with a carving knife. A servant boy holding a tray of meals said by the door, I also want to learn a craft. The labor department usually works for the families of officials, mostly with hand skills rather than just attending to people. Another servant boy smiled as he said, those who work these positions are all part of the same clan that make up the labor department. Their ancestors were part of the labor social class. And so were many of the following generations. We of the slave class can be redeemed into our own person, but they are locked into that social class forever. Chi Yunruo watched them from the side. Suddenly, he felt upset. Though he didn't know the cause of it. He fell into his thoughts, one breath at a time. Back then, the head steward of the Count estate had personally came to see him. In his words, Count and Countess Ziang summoned him. Chi Yunruo had followed the head steward, 
watching as the workers at the estate cleaned up after decorating for the incoming marriage. The head steward had given him only one explanation. This is also the third young master's joyous occasion. The countess had acted differently toward Chi Yunruo that day. Nicer. She smiled as she waved. Good child, come closer. And then came a whirlwind of persuasion. Your elder sister has been bestowed a marriage to the second prince. Your elder sister is pure and has no one to help her. It's not good for her to be alone. Your eldest sister dotes on you the most. Our Count Estate won't treat you poorly. Count Ziang drank a sip of tea. Not once did he spare him a glance. Countess Ziang didn't think that after listening to their speech, Chi Yunruo would keep quiet. After waiting for a moment, she asked, How do you feel about this? Yet he still did not speak. Feeling unhappy, the Countess spat out her next words, cold as ice. You don't need to think. Even if you want to marry a wife, which decent family would be willing to let their daughter marry you? Or do you want a girl from a fallen family and drag down our estate's prestige even more? Count Ziang came in with the side attack. This is certainly a suitable situation for you. When Qi Yunruo entered Winter Plum Courtyard's main chamber, Li Chen had already been there, sitting by the table. He was surprised at the sight of Qi Yunruo. The teen's figure was frail. Clothes the shade of melon did not suit him. It made his face seem pale. Weak. Li Chen's heart softened a sliver. It brought a smile to Qi Nikan's lips. Come here, younger brother. Qi Yunruo approached them, and Qi Nikan held his hand as she faced Li Chen. Your Highness, look at Yunruo. Any color suits him. Li Chen's heart felt a bit tender. He lightly nodded. He had yet to touch liquor but he felt drunk already. Li Chen ate his meal, unable to taste anything. At this moment, Chi Nikan didn't care how her own heart felt. She just needed to complete this mission. Her face carried a smile throughout the meal. Because she was pregnant, she didn't dare touch alcohol. Li Chen drank for a while before saying, pour a cup for little Chi. The attending servant girls rushed to find a cup for Chi Yunruo. Then the teen lifted the cup. Set it down. Chi Nikan smiled. Has younger brother ever drank before? Li Chen didn't say much besides, if you don't know how to drink this, then you shouldn't. Just a sniff, and Chi Yunruo felt that this wine wasn't fragrant enough. It wasn't like Osmanthus wine, which smelled like Osmanthus flowers. The three of them had their own thoughts. Their own desires. None of them paid attention to the food they ate. After three rounds of drinks, Chi Nikan got up with the help of her servant girl. She softly said, Tonight this concubine will not keep your highness. In a little while, your highness should go next door for some sobering tea. The princess consort should rest early. Another smile, and Chi Nikan left with her servant girl supporting her. The moment she had departed, Chi Yunruo set down his chopsticks and rose to his feet. Then he also left the chamber. After a moment of indecisiveness, Li Chen followed suit. Holding her servant girl's hand for support, Chi Nikan sat on top of her bed. She lifted the light covers and stretched her waist. Did they leave? Once you left, they did as well. She snorted. Chi Yunruo's suite was composed of two rooms. The first room was where he slept. It was connected to a small study. On the other side of the study lay the sleeping quarters of the servant girls. This was the first time Li Chen had stepped foot here. He found it somewhat cramped. Chi Yunruo did not concern himself with him, opting to sit on his bed. After sitting for a while, he rose and began to remove his clothes. Once the outer garments were off, he removed his white inner garments. He lay down silently on his bed. As he closed his eyes, he recalled a beautiful woman. It was a pity the woman did not smile. She had spent every day waiting for someone, waiting until her last breath. The woman had held Chi Yunruo's hand as she taught him to write and play the gukan. She had taught him chess, 
wanting to relieve her own loneliness and sorrow. Her beauty did not last for long. Bit by bit, sadness had marred her face. Chi Yunruo had known this from a young age, life was fragile. In a blink of an eye, a person could disappear from the world. Before she died, she had stared at a painting from her bed, called Misty Rain in Jiangnan. And she had said in a soft voice, Chi Suxiao, you cheated me. Chi Suxiao. Chi Suxiao. Back then, Chi Yunruo had watched her without a word, sitting on a low stool next to the bed. The tale of a hero and his beauty only existed in fiction. It did not occur in real life. You're crying. The moment Li Chen had entered the room, he found Chi Yunruo's face streaked with tears, his eyes wide as he stared at the ceiling. A few long strides later, Li Chen sat on the bedside and reached out to wipe away the strings of pearls. Chi Yunruo did not speak nor did he reveal any expression. He was somewhere else at the moment, recalling when Count Ziang had first brought him into the Count estate. His father had hesitated at the front doors. After sitting in the horse-drawn carriage in silence for a while, Chi Yunruo pushed back the window flap, unaware of what had caused Count Ziang to pause. He then heard him say, use the western door. The carriage resumed its trip. Chi Yunruo did not remember how long it had lasted, when Count Ziang told him to disembark. Lowering his head, Chi Yunruo climbed the stairs. The gazes of the servants had bored into his back. However, when he left the Count estate for the last time, he had finally walked through the main doors. It had been because Chi Nikan was getting married as the main wife, and he was following along as a dowry escort. Her dowry was supposed to leave the estate in a grand and bright manner. Her procession had to travel around half of the capital, flaunting to everyone. The night Count Ziang and his brothers had arrived for the dinner banquet, Chi Yunruo had followed Li Chen to personally send them off. They used the prince estate's main road from start to finish. Countess Ziang's palanquin had also been there, the family leaving together. From the tall doorway hung many lanterns, brightening the surrounding space. Back in the present, Li Chen helped pull the thin covers over Chi Yunruo. Then he left the room and called for a warm and damp handkerchief. He used it to wipe Chi Yunruo's face. Summer had already arrived. Ji Huan would leave in the spring of next year. In the future he would be akin to a fish swimming out into the ocean. And then he would grasp his freedom, the sky is his limit. Li Yiso could also leave if she had enough money to redeem herself. Sleep. Li Chen got to his feet, then made to depart. Before that, however, his foot paused at the doorway. Rest well. Chapter End Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 10 Illegitimate Son Following her marriage, Qi Dangzia made a trip to visit Qi Nikan. Her dear sister was still racking her brain to prepare a gift for the Empress' birthday celebration. If the gift wasn't grand enough, people might look down on their estate. If the gift was too grand, people might accuse them of flaunting, creating an unpleasant atmosphere. Although Prince Jing had two sons, none were of his legitimate line. This fueled competition between Qi Nikan and Princess Consort Jing. It's a pity that the Empress treated both daughter-in-laws the same, whether their husbands were of the legitimate line or not. Chi Nikan stood at a loss at what to do. The third prince, Prince Qing, was recently bestowed a marriage with Marquis Bai Kang's legitimate daughter. The previous generation of Marquis Bai Kang had his military power seized. The current Marquis was the deputy head of Zhongzheng Temple, in charge of managing the miscellaneous affairs of the nobility. He worked under the current emperor's uncle, Prince Li. Although the Zhongzheng Temple was similar to the Ministry of Rights in Role, it wasn't as powerful as the latter. The deputy head of Zhongzheng Temple was merely a mid-tier third-rank official. The future third princess consort's identity could not compare to that of Qi Nikan. Previously, Qi Nikan had come across the future princess consort Qing. Her temperament was akin to a hot chili pepper brash and quick to anger. Marrying into the imperial family might not be to her benefit. 
Qi Dangzia and the eldest son of the Minister of Revenue, Cheng Ling Jun, matched well. Although she was not of the legitimate line, in Count Ziang's estate her birth mother was second to only the Countess in position. Not only that, her maternal grandfather was good friends with Cheng Wenjia, the Minister of Revenue. Qi Dangzia's appearance was similar to her birth mother's, a pretty face paired with a curvaceous body. And Cheng Ling Jun was a person of the pen. A romantic. After marriage, the couple would maintain a good relationship. For this reason, Qi Dangzia had worn a smile the entire day. As she waited for her sister to arrive in the meeting area, Qi Dangzia caught sight of Qi Nikan carrying a toddler into the room. This little girl, Yan Er, is well behaved. She never gives me trouble. I also hope to have such an obedient daughter in the future. If eldest sister says this, the child in your belly will be mad. A smile blossomed on Chi Nikon's lips. Maybe it is a girl. Eldest sister is a blessed person. The other day my mother-in-law said if I had half your fortune, our estate would be satisfied. It was clear to Chi Nikon that those were merely words of courtesy. However, she still felt happy. After a sip of tea, Chi Dangzia asked, What's going on outside? The smile on Chi Nikon's face slightly dimmed. You did not come at a good time. Our third brother is currently moving out of this residence. Chi Dangzia glanced out the window, her smile never faltering. It slipped my mind that third brother had lived here as well. It's been a while since I've last seen him. Has he been well? Chi Nikon glanced at Li Yubai. The maidservant left the chamber and called for someone to summon Chi Yunruo. A heatwave had suddenly struck earlier. However, it wasn't time to use ice yet. Chi Yunruo wore thin clothes, body coated in sweat. The moment he had arrived at the parlor, he did not recognize Chi Dangzia. In fact, he thought it was another estate's concubine. The only thing contradicting his assumption was her bright red garments. That's when Qi Yunruo realized it was his younger sister, Qi Dangzia. Qi Dangzia was younger than Qi Yunruo by a couple of months. However, by appearance alone, she seemed older. Her hair was arranged in a mutton peony bun. She wore a hairpin showcasing two butterflies playing among a white jade flower, attached by a golden chain. Three smaller flowers sprouted from the side. It looked prettier and flashier than what Chi Nikan wore. Chi Yunruo could not think of what to say upon seeing it. Disgust flashed in Chi Dangzia's eyes but in a blink of an eye only a gentle smile remained. She beckoned him over. Revealed a pair of white jade bracelets as her sleeve fell from the action. It's been a while, third brother. Chi Yunruo thought for a moment before saying, Younger sister seems well. Younger sister looks healthier than usual. Covering her smile, Qi Dangzia turned to Qi Nikan. After staying with eldest sister for so long, third elder brother has improved in temperament. I envy you too. You're able to live in the same estate and help each other. Qi Nikan said, We are blood related siblings, so naturally we are close. It turns out third elder brother has been staying here all this time. Her words were tinged with curiosity. So why are you suddenly moving out? His Highness is compassionate. He was afraid that the princess consort would feel cramped in such a small space, said Chi Yunruo. Not a word left Chi Nikan's lips. She agreed with his analysis. For a while, Chi Dangzia also keep quiet. The less she had to converse with Chi Yunruo, the better. Even so, that did not mitigate her curiosity in how Chi Yunruo and Chi Nikan lived together in one courtyard. She found the nature of their relationship interesting. If it were her, and there was a person in her house like Chi Roshue, someone who looked adorable but was in control of their emotions so that it wouldn't show on their face when they harmed someone, she'd rather puke to death. Laughing in her heart, she thought that perhaps Chi Yunruo wasn't on the same level as Chi Roshue. Like mother, like son. When Count Ziang had first brought concubine Lu into his household, he also became interested in the most beautiful courtesan from Xia House, Shui Linglong. Later, he redeemed the courtesan, 
bought a residence unaffiliated with the Count estate and let her live there. This affected concubine Lu to a great extent. She could not get a wick of sleep, every night spent in tears. She was furious to the point where she wanted to eat Shui Linglong's flesh and drink Shui Linglong's blood. After that, concubine Lu paid someone to record how this Shui Linglong looked like. To learn how to be like her and to dress like her. And once she copied that woman, Count Ziang came back to concubine Lu. Luckily for her, Shui Linglong passed away and Count Ziang did not treat the son of that woman well. This was concubine Liu's greatest insult in her life. Never could she forget that she had to stoop to copying a lowly courtesan's looks and demeanor. When Qi Yunruo first entered the Count estate, concubine Lu already used her own ability to receive Count Ziang's favor. Both she and the Countess joined hands to refuse Qi Yunruo's entry into the genealogy book. Their influence was great. However, concubine Liu's suffering did not end there. Because of Count Ziang's relations with Shui Linglong, concubine Lu harmed her body from stress. Once she gave birth to Qi Dangxia, she could no longer give birth to another child. Her hopes of birthing a son were dashed. If there was any consolation, Count Ziang had felt regretful toward concubine Lu, and started to treat Qi Yunruo poorly. For this reason, since she was young, Qi Dangzia knew that this person wasn't her brother. He was the cheap spawn of a slut who caused her mother suffering. And he brought down the prestige of the household. Many people knew that the estate had a young master whose birth mother was of very humble origins. Qi Dangzia was afraid it would affect her. She hated him. Truly hated him from the bottom of her heart. Qi Dangzia repeated this to herself like a mantra. She herself was more noble than that person. Although she wasn't of the legitimate line, Count Ziang still doted on her. Yet it seemed like Qi Yunruo was living well. Qi Dangzia's heart was lit ablaze. She wished that the other women in the estate would tear him apart, that the prince would torture him to death, that Qi Nikan would bring forth his downfall. He wasn't allowed to live well. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair to her mother's suffering. As a newlywed, Qi Dangzia had come to the estate in bright red. Thinking about her marriage slightly soothed her heart, her mind settling into a more indifferent state. In the end, a man was a man. Even if he was favored, he could not provide a child, so what could he do in the future? After watching the time, Qi Nikan called for people to prepare the noon meal. Meanwhile, Qi Dangzia had already replaced her previous expression with a soft smile. She turned to Qi Nikan. Then this younger sister will be bothering eldest sister for a meal. Third brother, let's join together. I'm not coming. I still have things to do. Qi Dangzia didn't keep him. She waited for him to leave before saying, Where does third brother live now? A courtyard with a small two-story building and a view overlooking the lake. A smile danced on Qi Dangzia's lips. Seems like His Highness is fond of third brother. Seeing the corners of Qi Nikan's lips tilt upward, Qi Dangzia continued. But it's not something that can be seen in the open. In ancient times, there was Mitzi Xia. But once his looks faded, his lover Duke Ling turned against him. There's also Dong Xian, who committed suicide with his wife after the death of his lover Emperor Ai. And then there was the important Han Zaiga, who was sentenced to death after his lover, Emperor Chen, passed away. Qi Dangzia purposely chose the most miserable examples. All three men had been extremely favored, and even threw their main wives aside. Yet they had all met their downfall. Qi Nikan stared at her, cold as ice. Qi Dangzia smiled but did not speak. Qi Yunruo's new residence, Lakeside View House, wasn't a courtyard by itself. On one side was a wall and the other side a lake. The house was small, with seven to eight rooms available. Above the main chamber was a second floor where one could feed the fish in the lake. The amount of servants had increased from prior, with Li Yisuo as a first-rank personal servant girl, as well as Lulan, who was sent by the Internal Affairs Department of the estate. There were now four second-rank servant girls, and four additional third-rank servant girls, 
making a total of six third-rank servant girls. Little Ching, Chi Yunruo's page boy, had also been brought over. In the past, Eunuk Gao had assigned him to the forecourt, to learn with some reading partners of children of officials. There he learned how to read and how to attend to the master. He learned how to brew tea, grind ink, clean brushes, and organize the study. Lulan and Li Chen's personal maidservant Lo Shan were similar. They both came with him from the imperial palace and had clean family backgrounds. Their upbringing was good. Furthermore, Chi Yunruo also had a management eunuch assigned to him, called Yuji. He appeared quick-witted and intelligent. Chi Yunruo's new residence came with a small storage room. It housed many gifts sent by Ji Huan and Li Chen. Thinking that he wouldn't be around next year, Ji Huan had sent all the things he couldn't use in time to Chi Yunruo. It brought Chi Yunruo much joy. He looked and played with every item, personally storing them away. Once Lulan arrived at Lakeside View House, she realized her new master wasn't close with her colleague Li Yisu. Just a moment, and she understood why. Instead of Li Yisu, she had the highest position of all the servant girls in the residence. She worked her best for Chi Yunruo, thought and planned out things far in advance for him. Lulan mostly managed things inside residence, whereas the eunuch Yuji focused on the affairs outside. The duo was so diligent in their management duties, that when the elegant Ji Huan came to pay a visit, he praised, This place has been furnished well. Chi Yunruo smiled. It's because the servants work so hard. I really like the vase brother Ji sent me. In a little while, I will pluck a few Chinese herbaceous peonies and place them in there. Ji Huan smiled. It's good that you like it. Ji Huan ate lunch with Chi Yunruo before leaving. Once he returned to Beautiful Forest, he saw a little eunuch waiting outside the courtyard. Ji Huan frowned, before entering the house. The little eunuch followed him. Uiir said, Little Fusa has been waiting for a while. Ji Huan grunted his acknowledgement. After little Fusa greeted Ji Huan, he said, our master has not seen your honored self for a long time and misses your honored self dearly. This slave was to invite your honored self to a noon meal on behalf of our master. However, your honored self was absent. Once again, Ji Huan grunted. Little Fusa saw that his expression was poor. His heart trembled and his eyes widened a fraction. Did your honored self go to see young master Qi? Our master does not know yet what to gift young Master Chi for moving to a new place. Ji Huan slowly said, Speak. What does she want? Master wants to speak to your honored self personally. Ji Huan would visit Ji Ro when it was still bright outside. He would not stay for long. First, it was to avoid her, since male and female should observe proper decorum even between siblings. Second, it was because they were not close. Head back first. I'll go after taking a nap. Little Fuse's face showed his unwillingness. But Ji Huan had already returned to his inner chamber. Little Fuse forced a smile and laughed as he approached Uiair. Good sister, do you feel bad for me? When does your master usually wake up from his nap? So that this slave can inform my master. Uiir shot him a glance. Master had drank wine recently. I don't know when he will wake up. But little Fusa would not give up. He bitterly said, Then how long does my master have to wait? Uiir's next words were cold enough to freeze. It's not my master that is in a rush to see consort Ji. Because of his wandering thoughts, Ji Huan tossed and turned in bed. Shortly after, he got up and had Uiir help him into a fresh set of clothes. She followed him out. Ji Huan knew well what his sister Ji Ro wanted. Currently, the princess consort was pregnant and consort Wei was favored. And then there was the appearance of Chi Yunruo. She was no longer able to keep calm. Upon arriving at Frost Autumn Courtyard, Ji Huan went straight inside Ji Ro's house. Found her sitting atop her bed, gaze unfocused. Once she noticed him, her face lit up into a cold smile. Elder brother, aren't you an important person? 
Even when I want to see you, I have to jump through so many hoops. Ji Huan didn't care for her words. He sat down with an air of indifference. Whatever you want to ask, ask it now. Consort Ji took a deep breath. What's going on with that Ji Yunruo? What do you mean? Consort Ji slapped the table hard, her red painted nails flashing bright. We are blood related siblings. Yet elder brother would rather help an outsider. Frigid was Ji Huan's voice. Chi Yunruo has nothing to do with you. Consort Ji sneered. We're not as shameless as Count Ziang's estate to send a man. Isn't this too excessive for for him to send a son? With the prestige of that family from several generations, they actually gift wrap their son to their son-in-law. They don't care about face at all. Ji Huan smiled. You think you want face? That you're magnanimous? It's just that one does it secretly and the other does it in the open. The way elder brother puts this, it almost sounds like you're saying we forced you to come here. You didn't, hey? Five years ago, who told father that I was too young to take the imperial exams? Why was it that my birth mother died two years before I could take the exams? Consort Ji did not speak. She glared viciously at him. Ji Huan snorted. Little Chi isn't like you. You don't have to worry. Just keep watching those who can give birth. Consort Ji glanced at the little house to her left. Her son was sleeping inside. She said, Jing Er is his highness eldest son. Even if you don't want to help me, you should help that child. Eldest son? Is Prince Jing not the eldest son? Am I not the eldest son? Being the eldest son doesn't mean anything. Consort Ji's expression grew progressively worse. She had conspired with her mother to place Ji Huan in the prince estate to control Ji Huan. To use him. To destroy his ambitions, his ego, anything that would make him his own person and not dependent on them. However, Ji Huan wasn't someone that easy to break. He received the prince's trust. She had hoped that before he left the estate, he would transfer that trust to her. To help her gain more of the prince's favor. But in reality, the person Ji Huan had sworn to help was Chi Yunruo. Whether male or female, with the addition of another person, what she could retain of Li Chen's affection, a limited resource, had shrunk even further. Chapter End Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 11 Lakeside View House When Ji Ro had first entered the second imperial prince's estate, her father was still a small official in the Ministry of Revenue, a position called Yuan Weilang. Because the rank was so low, his words did not hold much weight, and Ji Ro's identity consequently wasn't high. However, she was still a secondary consort in Prince Chun's estate. Back then, the tertiary consorts had yet to enter the estate, only a few low-ranking concubines and personal attendants was around including her. Ji Ro was even able to grasp the privilege to manage the estate with her hands. Not to mention, she and Li Chen once shared a period of mutual joy. As such, Ji Ro had sometimes felt like she wasn't any different from a main consort. But life was not without setbacks. Later, once tertiary consort Li had received the prince's affections and became with child, Ji Ro worried that after she herself gave birth, the prince would be allured by those other beautiful tertiary consorts. It so happened that one of her servants discovered something interesting, the prince had visited a man in South Reed Pipe Pavilion, a well-known pleasure house. After that, an idea formed in Ji Ro's mind. She would have her eldest brother enter the estate as a guest. However, never had she thought Prince Chun would favor Ji Huan to that extent. A single Ji Huan took away half of his affections. When it rained, it poured. Shortly afterwards, secondary consort Wei entered the estate. She was a literate person and very knowledgeable about many topics. She also had a noble temperament. After just one year of living in the estate, she was already in the position to compete against consort Ji. Later on, once Ji Nikan married in, Ji Ro felt the difference between a main consort and a secondary consort. 
In front of the main consort, she was as lowly as dirt. But the more she felt this way, the less she wanted to submit to Chi Nikan. She just needed to gain the prince's favor again, like she had done so a few years ago. Then she could compete with her. So eldest brother is unwilling to assist me. When it comes to love, one cannot force it. Cold as ice, Ji Ro said, next year, I hope eldest brother will be one of the top exam takers. Thank you for the kind wish. As Ji Ro watched Ji Huan leave without a word, vicious thoughts formed in her heart. He knew the reason for his birth mother's death. He was also talented enough to be one of the top exam takers. Not only that, he possessed the prince's interest and love. With him around, her full-blooded brothers didn't stand a chance. Ji Huan. Ji Yunruo. A sinister smile slid its way across Ji Ro's face. In the house across from Consort Ji's, Consort Wei watched Ji Huan's departing figure. A light yawn escaped her lips. Consort Ji is starting to worry. Her maidservant Little Chiao said, These days, His Highness does not want to see her. If the princess consort gives birth to a son, her son would become irrelevant. Whether the prince is fond of young master Ji Huan or not, it does not concern the affairs of us women. Consort Ji is stupid, and has now been pushed to this point. Little Chiao smiled. After managing the estate for three years, Consort Ji has grown a large ego. Consort Wei held the jade handle of a green and silver threaded fan embroidered with mandarin ducks, lightly fanning herself. She laughed and shook her head as she left the window. Stroking her abdomen, she said, Tonight, tell the kitchen to send another plate of this sour radish. It has been already done, little Chiao said with a smile. As the mid-autumn festival drew near, Chi Nikan's pregnancy symptoms progressively increased, her abdomen more conspicuous than ever. Even if she were reluctant, she knew in her heart that it was getting harder for her to manage the estate. In order to maintain a good relationship with those families friendly with the prince estate, Chi Nikan, as the prince estate's princess consort and its female master, must arrange many functions for those families to attend. She must also be there to oversee the events and act as the hospitable hostess. Even those families that weren't as noble, she must still form a connection with them. Not only that, she had to supervise the supervisors of the hundreds of servants in the estate. And she had to bribe those supervisors to her side. Those who weren't obedient would be kicked aside. Those who were obedient would be boosted up the ladder of hierarchy. Although she was the princess consort, Chi Nikan had yet to give birth to a son. Moreover, she had not married into the estate for long. Many people still did not obey her especially some of the older female servants. They came from the imperial palace and had attended to the Empress Dowager and the Empress. How could they put a legitimate daughter from a count's household in their eyes? Fortunately, Chi Nikan still had the means to frighten and buy the other servants. However, in order to control the whole estate, she first had to bring those old servants on her side. Her stomach churned as she thought about this through the night. It was a shame that yielding the power to manage the household was out of the question. With the control of the entire estate still beyond her grasp, she could not give it away just yet. Otherwise, it'd be a waste of effort. She wanted people to see that despite her current physical condition, she was still the master of the estate that could promise her word. Yet, when Countess Ziang came for a visit, she was of a different opinion, her fury nearly palpable. Do you think this is more important than your son? Darling Kun, why can't you see clearly? Once you've given birth, who can compete with you in this entire place? Her expression poor, Chi Nikan forced out her next words. If it were I who mentioned this, His Highness would just give the power back to Consort G. Consort G is not an easy target. Then you can recommend someone that you trust, said the Countess her heart throbbing in pain. Don't tell me that during the month after giving birth, you still want to manage the estate. Chi Nikan took her time to speak. In the estate, other than Consort Chi, the only other possible candidate is Consort Wei. Consort Wei and Consort Chi don't see eye to eye. 
However, she and I are not close. The moment she heard those words, Countess Ziang smiled. Once you yield the managing power into her hands, she will naturally be close to you. I will listen to mother. Sure enough, Chi Nikan mentioned this idea to Li Chen at nightfall, shocking him for a moment. But his response was even more of a shock. Consort Wei is pregnant. She most likely cannot take on this responsibility. Princess Consort should recommend a different person. After standing there in a daze, Chi Nikan smiled. Why was this concubine not aware of this situation? In a nonchalant manner, Li Chen said, her pregnancy is not yet stable. I wanted to let you know after three months. A moment of thought. Then I will not trouble Consort Wei with it. Consort Ji still has to take care of Jing Er, so what about tertiary Consort Li? She's no good. Chi Nikan's jaw dropped. A few thoughts flashed in her mind before she recovered with a smile. Then this concubine will recommend a different person. I hope to hear your highness honest opinion. Oh. Smile never leaving her lips, Chi Nikan said, this concubine's younger brother is literate and bright. It's also convenient for him to walk through the inner and outer courtyards, as he can just directly go see Eunuch Suji if something is needed in the forecourt. If he can't command others' respect by himself, this concubine will back him up. I wonder what your highness thinks of this. Li Chen thought for a moment. Hesitated before he said, Little Chi is a man after all. Third brother is your highness person, said Chi Nikan, once again smiling. Everyone knows of this fact. Since the princess consort wishes for this, then it's settled. Although she wasn't sure if she was upset or happy about the conclusion, since both husband and wife agreed, Chi Nikan did not hold any regrets. The next day, she called Chi Yunruo over to discuss this. Chi Yunruo's eyes shone with confusion, face twisted into a frown. He had no clue what managing the estate had to do with him. Expressionless, Chi Nikan slowly said, This is my and His Highness intentions. Take the ledgers and go. You must follow how things were done in the past. If you don't understand something, come look for me. Aware that his sister didn't want to speak much, Chi Yunruo grabbed the items and left. Chi Nikan had also sent her most trusted servant Nanny Song to him temporarily. Nanny Song brought her covers, pillows, and luggage to Lakeside View House. The moment she arrived, Lolan arched a brow. Then she cleared out a room for Nanny Song sending the original occupants, two lower-ranked servant girls, to a vacant room. As soon as Li Yisou saw Nanny Song arrive, a tinge of unhappiness crept upon her heart. When it came to status, Nanny Song was the nursemaid of the estate's main consort, the most useful person at Chi Nikan's side. With just her age and experience alone, every servant in the residence could not compare to her. For this reason, Nanny Song might become the person managing the estate in the shadows from now on. Although Lakeside View House was small, the main chamber was spacious. The master bedroom lay in the innermost chamber. To the left and the right was a side room each. One was used as a waiting area for the maidservants on night duty. One was used as storage. Just beyond the inner chamber was the study, with a shelf holding decorative treasures on one side and a shelf for books on another. During her move, Nanny Song brought many servants with account books over, her action broadcasting to the whole estate that the managing power now lay in Chi Yunruo's hands. Ever since Li Chen had established his own estate, Zhong Zheng Temple gave him his rightful share of tax-free farmland. A prince's share. Li Chen's retainers helped him manage his stores and personal forests. As a prince born from the empress, his yearly allowance was 450 kilograms of silver, though it wasn't considered that large of an amount. This year, when he got married, the imperial palace gave him 1,400 kilograms of silver. The wedding gifts, which mostly composed of money, was an even larger amount. Suffice to say, Li Chen was extremely wealthy. As Qi Yunruo calculated his assets and money, he couldn't help but sigh. After he had moved to Lakeside View House, 
the forecourt provided his monthly allowance. Suji gave him 500 grams of silver for the first month in the form of two heavy silver ingots. Compared to Li Chen's total wealth, this was nothing. His concubines could either let the estate manage their dowries, and have their total amounts calculated every month and every year, or they could find someone skilled to manage those accounts. The dowry of the two secondary consorts was relatively small. It couldn't even compare to that of Qi Dangxia. Consort Ji possessed the deed to a store that sold perfumes and other beauty products. Her dowry escort was the one managing it. Consort Wei had a plot of farmland that also had a hot spring, which was outside the city. Li Chen had visited there once. The prince estate managed this place for her. After spending a whole day, Qi Yunruo still did not finish going through the accounts. On the third day, the monthly allowance would be given to the members of the inner court. However, the inner court did not have a treasury. Rather, the two chests of silver were still in Winter Plum Courtyard. Chi Nikan had received these two chests a few months ago from the estate's storage. Li Chen had a key to the estate's treasury. Chi Nikan had another, and Su Ji had one as well. All three keys were required at once to enter the estate's storeroom the treasury lying deep in the middle of it, out of sight. Hidden guards kept it safe. On the second night, Chi Yunruo finished calculating the expenses, wrote them down, and asked Chi Nikan to look over it. Chi Nikan then sent her key to him. One key down, and two to go. Now Chi Yunruo looked for Su Ji in Ink Lotus Courtyard. The moment he arrived, he hesitated at the door. The guards looked at Chi Yunruo suspiciously. After stating his purpose for coming, he went inside to search for Su Ji. Su Ji smiled. Young Master Xiao Qi, you've finished calculating the expenses. Yes. This month's expenses is 65 kilograms of silver. I want to take out 250 kilograms of silver to use. In case we need more later. That's reasonable, said Su Ji. His Highness has not yet returned. He'll be back in about less than one hour, so please wait inside. Oh. All right. As Su Ji sent someone to serve tea, Chi Yunruo said, Eunuch Su Ji, for you to manage the forecourt must be hard work. Su Ji couldn't help but smile again. Those gentlemen staying at the forecourt also have monthly expenses. And then there are the servants. If young master Xiao Qi finds it too difficult, it's because it's your first time managing an estate. After completing the task once, you'll find it easier. It'll be better next month. Su Ji nodded. That's correct. Qi Yunruo was a man of few words. Seeing that he did not speak further, Su Ji called for someone to serve some desserts and fruits. How does young master Xiao Qi feel about your current duties? Do you find them uninteresting? Chi Yunruo smiled. Not at all. Although it's a lot of work, it's interesting. I just need to talk. The rest will be done by the servants. Interesting, you say? Su Ji watched him closely. Chi Yunruo nodded. Mm. Yesterday, I went over the estate's general ledger. Starting in the afternoon. I looked at all the residences in the inner court. Besides that, I looked at the labor department's allowances, award money, and penalties. I also heard that there are guards that patrol every night. I've already arranged for all of that. It's so interesting. Not a word left Su Ji's lips. He personally poured tea for him. The sky grew dark. Su Ji heard a sound outside and said, Looks like there's something keeping His Highness. He went directly to the outer study. I don't know when he'll be back. Young Master Xiao Qi, are you hungry? He nodded. When Su Ji went outside to personally deliver desserts and tea to the outer study, he noticed that Li Chen's expression was not good. He had yet to change out of his prince of the first rank robes. Su Ji served tea for each of the four gentlemen in the room. He did not dare to ask them if they wanted dinner even after a long while had passed. These four men were Li Chen's retainers. They did not have an official rank. One of them, 
named Li Xu Qin, used to be an official however. Another one, Chao Manjin, was a Juran, someone who attained the second highest degree in the imperial examinations. However, because he charged a fee for his calligraphy in storefront signs and the like, he garnered a bad name. He could not get the chief examiner to like him, and could not pass the next ranks exam even after trying many times as a result. But Li Chen admired his intelligence and talent, inviting him to his estate to work. The next one was the eccentric gentleman Yang. He was like a crane who couldn't sit still. Who knew where Li Chen found him? The last one was Li Chen's reading partner, Li Yu. He was born of the nobility. Since his grandfather's generation, his family had set up business in Jiangnan. However, he didn't like to study nor did he like to work in his family's business. After he was of age, he asked Li Chen if he could work for him. My dear third brother wants 100,000 soldiers to crush by Kiang. In our empire, Every year we spend an astronomical amount of funds and send numerous men to maintain order at the border. Yet after just reading a few books, he already thinks he has the ability. Li Xu Qin said, Your Highness, don't be upset. The way I see it, apart from the noble consort, there is no one that agrees with Prince Qing's idea. Bai Qiang is different from the small tribes of the south. Since long in the past, we have had conflict with Bai Kiang, winning only half our battles. The current emperor has a large vision and a wealth of ability. His attitude toward Bai Kiang is strong and forceful. In his old age, his majesty would not risk such a huge loss for the empire for the sake of his most beloved son. Li Chen did not speak. Ever since he was young, he had practiced martial arts and drowned himself in military theory. But he was worried that if he directly asked his imperial father to lead troops into battle, the latter would hardly be in a good mood. Now that his sons were grown, this aging father might not like for his sons to directly pick up a sword. It wasn't just Marquis Bai King that had his army seized. Count Ziang had as well. Despite there being many important generals in the empire, none were as good at commanding troops as those two. Yet if there were a prince behind them, the situation might prove different. So the question remained, would Li Chen ask to lead troops to battle? Chapter End